Welcome back to the Point Blank Performance YouTube channel. What do we have for you guys today? A 2021, not L5P, but an L5D. So let's jump into that. This truck actually has an L5P engine and an L5P transmission, but it's labeled as an L5D because it's a medium duty, as I like to call it, top kick or Kodiak. So guys, we just came back from the Daytona truck meet. We just pulled a 25 foot trailer. We had a truck on it. I'm full of information of how this truck pulls. Let's dive into that. As mentioned before, the truck is powered by an L5P Duramax engine and transmission. On the dyno, we've seen those trucks put down 430 rural horsepower. They'll pull anything that you want in a stock form. Now we're moving up to a medium duty. It's a way bigger truck, you can check it out. It's got the big wheels and tires and a flatbed on it. These trucks are built for a purpose, to work all day. They're supposed to pull heavy loads. They're supposed to not be in the shop getting repairs all the time. What do they do to accomplish that? They pull the power back. So this truck's supposed to put down like 330 rural horsepower, give or take. So how do you accomplish that with an L5P Duramax that makes 430? Well, they put a little smaller turbocharger on there. We don't like that because the VGTs have super high drive pressure. So they're just maxed out all the time, making that 330 rural horsepower. Number two, how do you spool the turbocharger? Injector. They take some of the fuel away from the injector so it's a little bit smaller. So guys, we just pulled our 25 foot trailer. We had a heavy Longhorn truck on there, a mega cab. We pulled it to the Daytona truck meet. This truck is way under power. We're gonna pop the hood, talk about those two components, they need to be upgraded. Here's where you're gonna to wanna to pay attention. This is our own personal shop truck. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. If you're easily offended about these trucks, you don't like our feedback, you're probably gonna to wanna to not listen any further because I'm gonna tell it like it is. These Kodiaks are way, way, way underpowered. That's the reason why the hoods pop. That's the reason why it's here. We're gonna be diving into it, making more power, but let's talk about the factory stuff. We've got this massive air box here. You think this thing would put down a thousand rural horsepower, right? Well, it's got a good air box on it. We're gonna leave it at that. We're gonna go on to the turbocharger. What's the two things that you need in a diesel engine because it's a thermal dynamic engine to make horsepower? Air, they got the air box, right? And you need fuel. Now the turbocharger on an L5D is actually smaller than an L5P. Okay, cool. Should still make power. This thing looks like a beast but it does not perform like one. This truck puts down 25 PSI of boost. How do I know that? Because it stayed there the entire time I drove it, more so than it did at zero at an idle, right? We're going up the hills. We're in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We've got our 25 foot trailer. We've got our truck on the trailer. Man, this thing is buried on the floor. Speed limit's only 75, so it can't break the law there. So guys, the turbocharger, what does it need? It needs air, we've got that, we need fuel. So here's a couple things. When you're going up a big hill, you're burying this thing at 25 pounds of boost. The timing's cranked, you've got your fuel pressure up. What does all those things do? They create massive amounts of heat. They want these trucks in an OEM standpoint to produce zero smoke. That's cool, I get it. You don't want a volcano coming out because if you have high EGTs, well, what does that mean? It's a dirty truck. We get the whole big picture. But what the picture that most people don't get is when you buy this truck and you're going up a hill and it's maxed out all the time, creating massive, massive amounts of engine heat. With all in turn, you could do it with a lot less throttle if you had a more efficient turbocharger and you had a little bit more injector to actually get the job done you could bring in the power low, it could pull up the hill, and everything's good. You wouldn't need actually 25 pounds of boost. So I talked about the injector, let's show you where it's at. So what we're taking a look at here is an L5D fuel injector. They look identical to an L5P, but they're not, it's actually smaller. So when I say a bigger injector, people's mind automatically goes to black smoke, street racing, all this craziness. But when I look at an injector and I say, hey, we actually need a little bit more fuel. We want to make an efficient truck. And this is where I'm going to give you some feedback. What I watched on this truck as we're pulling, I watched the timing get up around like 15, 16 degrees of timing. So what's that telling me with this truck? That they're really pulling back the fuel. Now, of course, this engine is efficient. 
It's efficient at a lower RPM from what I've seen, but not up top because they won't turn loose as some fuel. So timing's one thing. What is timing? Timing is where you turn loose of the fuel in the cylinder to make power. You can increase the timing and you can create a lot of heat, which is cylinder pressure. And my personal opinion, of course, I'm not an engineer, but I'm gonna tell you my feedback. That's what they're doing. They're running a lot of timing with a little bit of fuel. And as I just told you about the turbocharger, a lot of boost pressure. The engine gets the worst part of that. The coolant goes through the roof. As I've seen, like 215, almost 220 degrees. You say that's not that hot. Well, it's a diesel engine. I want my diesel truck around 200 degrees. 205 is pulling up a hill. So again, a smaller injector, that has its time and place, but not in this medium duty truck. And of course, not in an L5P Duramax engine, which has a huge potential. This truck has tons of power to be made. And if it makes it and puts it down like it should, this truck will be 10 times more efficient. So guys, I can harp on it all day long about how underrated, how underpowered, and how my expectations were like, poop. But what's better than that? It's dyno time. So guys, we just finished up on the dyno run on the 100% 21 L5D Kodiak truck. Guys, first, before we tell you the number, check out our post here on Instagram. What I say this thing would lay down, well, I said if it made anything over 200 rural horsepower, I'd be highly surprised. What do you know? This guy laid down 257 rural horsepower and 471 feet pound of torque. God, earth shatter, right? So moving on guys, the 2500 trucks that we usually show you, they lay down 400 ruble horsepower. This thing is D-rated 150 horse. And you've seen in the video, we've got one tire off. Why? Because on my dyno, I can't fit both duels on there, but it gives us a more accurate number, right? If I would have had the other tire on, hell, we might not have made 230. So it's for the better off of this truck that we had it on there. Moving forward, we bought this truck for a reason. It's our tow truck. Do we keep this truck, upgrade to our D1 HP package, or we say the hell with it, sell this thing, let's get a Ford Power Stroke, right? Because that's what I really wanted. But I bought this truck because I know what the engine's capable of. It, at Daytona, we talked to Jason Worley, owner of Worley Custom Fab, and we said, hey, you might be interested in doing an S400 turbocharger on this, or even doing a compound. That's where we're reaching out to you guys. If you've got a Kodiak and you're interested in this platform, because at the end of the day, it's business, and we take it serious moving forward. We'd like to hear from you. Drop us a comment below. Would you like to see a big single turbocharger on this? Or would you like to see the compounds? Guys, make for sure you like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Any questions or comments about today's video, drop them below. See you next week.